Good morning, and I'm very glad to be here at a youth conference. And it's a little bit odd because I'm a 60-year-old man with no hair, and what little hair I have is gray. So what makes me different than probably just about everybody in the room here is that I've lived a long, long time compared to most people in the room, and have had a lot of different kinds of experiences. And my little talk is about Franz Kafka and his relationship to global climate change. Does anyone know who Franz Kafka is? Anyone have any ideas? Please call it out. Huh? Well, he was an author who described the modern world as alienated, alarming, ambiguous, menacing, almost out of control. And he was one of the most important European authors of the early 20th century. Do you ever feel like the world doesn't make sense or is absurd? Well, I, I have that feeling a certain amount of the time. And Franz Kafka described this world in a very amazing way. Well, most of you don't know who this guy is and what he had to say. He was a Jewish author in Czechoslovakia. And he was part of a group that was pretty much despised and hated and wiped out during the Second World War by the Nazis, almost entirely. He died of tuberculosis before the Holocaust, but his three sisters were wiped out during it. So I have a little video here that tries to make sense and to give a feeling to young people or to younger audiences about a world that's a little bit crazy and different and a little bit far away and a little bit close. So I thought we'd play a little bit of the video to start it off. Gil, do you want to give it a shot? musicians did on this was take traditional Jewish melodies and mix it with African American blues into something a little bit different, a little bit unexpected. And it's a world that seems disconnected. In, in the wired world, how many you think that computers create global harmony or global conflict? Anyone have any feelings? <laughs> Yes. Yes, that's true. That the internet and the computer world is just a tool. It can create much more in the way of conflict, or the much more in the way of compassion. Now, we're sitting here in a room on a Saturday morning, whether we want to be here or not be here, and there's something called climate change going on. Does anyone have any idea what it is? Any ideas about what climate change is? Too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Yeah, that could be, that's certainly part of it. And what does it do to the world? Makes places wetter, some drier. That's right, it makes some wetter. And what it's going to do to a lot of cities in the world is flood them. And we're talking about the dislocations of tens and hundreds of millions of people. 
is it, is it something that any of us individually can really do anything about? Any feelings about it? Because it's the primary change of all pe young people who are living in the world today. You're living in a world that's there's going to be disruption in your environment. Things sometimes get warmer, sometimes get colder. It's certainly going to affect people who are driving buses. And I did a little video called Mundo Caliente. Do we have any Spanish speakers in the room who can tell us what that is? Mundo Caliente. Yeah, that's exactly. So what I did with this little video, rather than get depressed about the changes in the world, I said, what's the hottest music in the world? Anyone have any idea? Salsa. You got it. <laughs> Latin music. So I had my very clever musician friends do a mundo caliente. Mundo caliente. And I chose that because uh, Peggy Lee, a great singer, had already done You Give Me Fever. And that's already been taken. So I had to come with a new one. So I called it Mundo Caliente, and I took the hottest music I knew, which is sort of the Latin mambo type stuff, and made a tra uh, potential tragedy, the global warming, into a dance, into a mambo. And it's an interesting little piece. And I think that's the strength of art, is that you can take whatever you have around you, whether it's good or bad, and to turn it into something that's beautiful and communicates and maybe makes people think. So we're going to give a little bit of hot mambo music to global climate change.
it's a fun little video, and I want to let you know, particularly young people, that you sometimes don't expect is that there's collaborators and helpers everywhere in the world. The person who did the video is just someone I met at a film festival years ago. The people who did the music were just friends who just wanted to do this for me. And we had some fun doing with it. And I want to mention my friend Dan Kleiman, who was the great musical driver behind this. He dropped dead last year, very young. But the beauty when we do things of value, particularly things that are, you could call art, it keeps us alive forever. We, I noticed that people really kind of engaged with the music. And I wanted to thank Dan, wherever he is now, for the wonderful job that he did with Phyllis Chappelle and Kenny Ulancey on this piece. Uh, I wanted to basically share the idea that no matter what your situation is, it's always open to change. I don't want to share too much about my own life, but to let you know that at the age of 41, I was in an accident that was pretty much disabled for five years. And at this point in my life, I can't, I've been unable to fly because I can't go above sea level. So I have to take buses, Ray, and cars and trains. But the internet and the web allows us to travel in all sorts of ways. So that is the sort of the dance with global, global climate change, global warming. The last little video I want to share with you was done at a period of literal despair for me. And um, it's a happy video. I decided that the earth is so beautiful, is so beautiful and so healing. And that's one of the sad things about living in the Tampa Bay for me. So much of what was beautiful has been made ugly. And it affects us in ways that we can't even always touch or even aware of. It doesn't allow us to heal. I live of four months of the year up in Maine and northern New England. And the mountains and the lakes and the areas that are still very beautiful and untouched. And I did something called uh, Green Mountain Ramble, the Green Mountains of Vermont. And I mixed some music that I picked up at a filling station. It's just a local group had done a CD and I liked it. And then I took the artwork that I was doing up there and then had a young woman who had just gotten out, I believe, of the Savannah College of Art and Design. She was not much older than you. I said, put this together for me. And I think it's a real joyous piece. And it, every time I listen to it, it kind of makes me happy. So I hope it will make you happy in this morning.
last thought with you. It came from uh, Franz Kafka, who described this horrible world. But at the end of his young life, youngish life, he said this. He said, if you believe passionately in something that doesn't exist, you will help create it. And what Ray, I would like to reiterate, it's entirely true. I'm almost 40 years older than Ray, and I can tell you, if you believe in something strong enough and are willing to persevere, that you will get something. It may not be exactly what you want, but it will be something of value. And I also wanted to share with you a website called creativeshare.org. I've sort of rebranded because who knows what a creative ledge is, but everybody knows what a creative share is, to share what you have. And my grandfather always said is, if you want to be rich, share what you have. And uh, I hope that you all, young people, will. Thank you so much.